Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars, and welcome to I secretly bought my wife what looks to be a totally stock 5.0 Mustang GT, but in reality is a 600-ish horsepower twin turbo Mustang GT. So a few days ago, I secretly bought this car. I didn't tell her a thing. And in this video, we're gonna dyno the car. We're gonna modify the Mustang. And then I'm going to give her the Mustang as a gift. This truly will be her car. And then she's gonna take it out for her first and very unsuspecting drive. All right, I'm all the way down. Holy cow, Alex. And then at some point, I'm probably gonna have to tell her what's going on under the hood. All right, so we're about to go hit the dyno with the Mustang, see what kind of power she puts down. And then we wanna verify that the tune is okay. But first, I wanna change the oil. The previous owner said that they did change the oil, but I don't know what he used. I don't know how long ago it was done. And I really just like to start from scratch on this kind of stuff. And I gotta say, this does not look that new. This doesn't look new at all. Yeah, so I'm definitely glad I'm doing this. I really just don't trust anyone when it comes to engine oil. These things have a really strong magnetic drain plug and it looks really clean. There's nothing on it. So that's good. If you guys saw the last video where we compression tested the engine, it was perfect. So. So far, this engine's in great shape. Or the last guy just cleaned all the metal shavings off this drain plug. One of the two. All right, while the oil is draining, let's do a diff service as well. This might be worth a half a pony on the dyno. You never know. Ooh, pressurized. So it's not really normal for a diff to be pressurized, so it makes me think that this breather tube that's totally nasty and dirty is clogged up, so I'm definitely gonna clean that out. All right, so this is actually just a fill plug. This is a style differential where you need to remove the entire back cover to do a fluid change, or you can suck it out and make life a lot easier. So we're just gonna use one of these cheapo fluid transfer pumps. Oh, here she comes. Let's point this down. This stuff stinks, by the way. Ah, oh, this is like brand new. Oh, they just did this. Look at that, it's some nice fluid right there. Awesome. You know what, this had a factory Ford Motorcraft filter. It's got new diff fluid. The car is super clean. Really makes me think this thing was maintained. Hang on, let's stick the tube down a little bit better. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting some good flow. So we can suck the entire thing out, save the RTV, save the labor and the mess of removing that rear cover that's not leaking at all. And we're just gonna go this route. Oh yeah, we're still swapping this out though, even though it's brand new. With all of it sucked out, we're simply gonna squeeze our Amsoil Severe gear right back in and i love these squeeze pouches because they're so easy you literally just squeeze it in and it's good to the last drop you're able to get all of it in here so there's no waste and that way you don't have to pump it back in which also causes waste because you lose some in the tubes and it just becomes all messy and nasty as soon as it starts coming out you're good this guy's totally empty and now we simply reinstall our drain plug and our diff service is done so this could cost upwards of 150 200 dollars to get done at the dealership or a shop. Do it yourself, save money, and don't forget to tighten your drain plug when you're done. And if you guys want to get 25% off all Amsoil products, I'll leave you a link down below. Get back in there, there we go. All right, so I always like to fill up our oil filter. You don't have to make a mess out of this thing. And then we'll just lubricate the seal a little bit, just like so. Oh, and check it out. That's how they tap into the engine block to get the turbo oil feeds. So those are two lines going to each turbo. And then there is one of the drains into the oil pan, and there's the other drain into the oil pan. Cool. And with that, we'll go ahead and screw our new oil filter on, and you wanna crank this down to about, eh, about two, 300 foot-pounds, something like that. You know, really, really get the next guy. Right, the next guy's gonna be me. Don't do that. Don't tighten your oil filter that much. That is the absolute worst when you bring these to like a Jiffy Lube, and the guy just cranks it on there with a wrench. And then you basically destroy the thing to get it off. Oil gets everywhere. It's a big mess. Don't do that. Now, one of the most important parts of doing a service is putting oil back in the engine. You definitely should think about doing that. I know some people don't. I mean, I didn't on my 93 Camry engine experiment, but nine out of 10 mechanics recommend that you do refill your engine oil after draining it. I'm one of those nine. I like oil. All right, with the fluid swapped out, let's replace some spark plugs. We have to remove this big strut tower brace for that. And then our 5.0 engine cover snaps right off. Now I'll remove the catch can hoses on both sides and then each side has one of these metal Ford racing covers, which I found out is not factory. They're not normally metal. Although it says 2010 here, and genuine Ford racing parts made in California, USA. I don't know, are these factory? Next up, we'll remove these coil bolts. 
the coils out like so. All right, then at that point, we're just loosening up our spark plugs. You guys know the drill. I took these out in the last one. So let me show you the new spark plugs that I'll be installing in this engine. So here is one of the old spark plugs. They look to be in pretty decent shape, but I'm not sure how old they are. And on a boosted setup, I don't want to play games. Uh, so these are Brisk Silver RR14S. So these are one step colder and I'll be replacing them with Brisk Silver RR14S. So these are the exact same spark plugs. I ordered these immediately after buying the car. And then a friend of mine reached out and he said that he's had a lot of bad luck with these brisk spark plugs falling out really easily and causing intermittent misfires. And then I reached out to Hellion, the maker of the twin turbo kit to see what they recommend. And they run the factory spark plugs up to about a thousand horsepower. They just gap them differently. So at this point, I have a dyno appointment that I have to make. So I'm just gonna go ahead with the brisks, but let me know in the comment section, have you guys had good luck with these? Have you had any issues with these? And what do you run on your boosted Coyote 5.0? All right, so I already cleaned these nasty air filters in the last video. So let me go ahead and replace all eight of these spark plugs. And then we're gonna go hit the dyno and see what this thing puts down, see how she sounds at wide open throttle standing still. Um, and guys, if you have one of these cars, definitely replace your own spark plugs. There's no need to pay anyone to do them. Probably take you about 20 minutes, that's it. And you know I'm all about saving money, which is why I use the Upside app. So with Upside, you earn cash back when you buy gas, food, or dine out at restaurants. If you own a gas guzzler like me, you know how important that is. And look at this, 16% off protein bar, Nando's 20% cash back. So Upside will automatically search your area for great deals, but you can also type in where you're going, like Nashville, Tennessee, and check it out, 18% off at Hattie B's. When I get there, I'll definitely need to fill up, 12 cents per gallon cash back. Unless you're a robot looking to take over the world, we all need to eat, and you can save 12% back at a grocery store. Why not? There is no downside here. And look at how easy this is. Just hit claim, check in when you get there, and then just make your purchase, and Upside automatically calculates the cash back and puts it in your account. From there, you can withdraw and deposit your money right into your own bank account, your PayPal account. You can get an e-gift card and many other easy options. And the best part is you guys can download Upside for free by clicking on my link in the video description box or the pinned comment and make sure to use coupon code LEGIT. That's gonna get you at least $5 cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. So get the app, you won't regret it. You're gonna save a ton of money. I absolutely love it. And with that, let's go hit the dyno. Well, it's pretty safe to say that the Mustang is not with its own kind here today. We are at Speed Inc. in Schaumburg, Illinois. And I've known these guys for about 20 years. They build some of the coolest cars around. And today in the shop is mostly all GM, except for that Mustang there and my Mustang here. I mean, my wife's Mustang, my, my wife's Mustang. We hit 573 horsepower to the wheels on the first run. That is pretty good. All right, guys, so you know Jim from tuning my Caprice PPV, which is still going strong, by the way, Jim. Good. Excellent job. Good here. <laughs> How did this run go? I uh, got a bit of tire spin, which is normal for a turbo car on street tires. So tighten up the straps and uh, we'll get to give it another try. The air fuel ratio is looking good though. And seems like it runs clean, so we'll just let it cool off and try it again. If you guys noticed a little bit of smoke from this turbo, it's because I spilled a little bit of oil on it accidentally when I did the oil change. And I thought I cleaned it all up, but apparently I didn't. All right, guys, so we're gonna go for run number two, and he's gonna give it a little bit more RPM, but everything's looking good. I still have oil on the housing, go away! Yeah, so getting traction, you know, picked up torque because it was able to apply into the roller. 
but apparently it was hooked up by the end of the run because the peak power remained the same. But their fuel ratio and everything looks good and you know, it runs to 7,500 RPM, so it seems good. All right, you heard the man. That's all we really wanted to check for uh, was that it was running a safe tune because I don't have any records for this car, no build sheets, nothing. Uh, so we did right around the same power, a little bit less. We let it cool down for about 10 minutes. But yeah, you can see here, since we got traction, it did 480 foot-pounds of torque and just a tiny little bit less horsepower. All right, we're all done at the dyno. Oh, I love this car. We have a safe Mustang that produces quite a bit of power for you dyno numbers guys out there. Factoring in a pretty conservative 15% drivetrain loss, it could be more. Uh, we're looking at about 650 crank horsepower. And to be even more conservative, we had to dyno the car in third gear. Normally you dyno in fifth gear, which is one to one, and you would actually show less power dynoing in third. The reason we had to do this is I didn't realize that without a special tuner, you can't lock this thing into fifth gear. Only the 2011 and 2012s were like this. Later on, you could shift it manually and keep it in that gear. So unfortunately, that's all we could do on such short notice. So I'm fairly confident that this thing would have broken 600 to the tires had we done it one to one. But nonetheless, the Mustang is safe. It's ready to rock. Well, not entirely. We're gonna go do some big brakes now. All right guys, slight change of plans. I'm gonna surprise my wife with the twin turbo Mustang right now. So I ran into a little parts ordering issue and the parts that we're gonna put on this car in this video aren't gonna arrive right away. And I'm worried that if my wife pops in the shop, she's going to find the Mustang. It's gonna be hard for me to kind of keep this a secret and I don't wanna think about it to be honest with you. Uh, so I brought it here last night and I'm gonna surprise her this morning with the car. Now the only issue with this is that it's raining. It started raining a few hours ago so uh, I don't think it's a good idea to have her take her maiden voyage in the roughly 600 wheel horsepower twin turbo Mustang in the rain. That that could be slightly dangerous. But anyway, she's coming out to the garage right now. I think she thinks I put together some Rubbermaid box or something she was asking me about, and I, I did not do that. But I did get her a Mustang. Hey, what's up? Hey. Did you get a new car? You got a new car. What? <laughs> I get to call this mine? Yeah, what do you think? Holy cow, this is nice. We've never had a Mustang before. I no, and I'm kind of surprised you got a Mustang. I, I know. thought you were a GM guy. I know, it should be a Camaro, but I've never owned a Mustang and now the first one is wow. is yours. This, this is like brand new. Doesn't it look nice? What year do you think this is? I don't, I have no idea. Um, 2016? It's a 2011. Okay. But look at how beautiful it is. Wow. It's like a brand new car. <laughs> Are you also giving me a girl's weekend too? Sure. You can take all your friends out in the Mustang. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, like when else am I going to drive this? I can't take the kids around in it. No, I know. It's for, it's for you to enjoy and have fun. You know, you could bring it to some car shows with me. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Isn't it fancy? I mean, look at this. So this car has 75,000 miles. Can you believe it? Wow. Like, look at, look at the seats. Yeah, this is perfect. It's a Ford. Like it held up. Yeah. This is really nice. I never imagined a Mustang, but this is nice. It's really cool. It's fun to drive. It's got an awesome stereo, no fuss. It feels literally like a brand new car. What? So what's the story? Like, what? Where did you find this? Like, why did you Everything's think, got a story. Why did, why did you think of me when you bought this? Well, it was after the supercharged Escalade track video. Okay. It seemed like you were a little bit more into performance. If you guys remember in that video, she was asking <laughs> what modifications we needed to do to run a higher mile an hour. I have proof, all right? It's right here. So he went 113 miles per hour. I just went 102. How can we get ours up to miles per hour? Up to 113? Yeah. So what am I taking this to the track? Like what? No, I thought it'd be something? cool. If, I thought it'd be cool. If, no, I didn't do anything. I thought it'd be cool for you to have a performance, a cool performance car. Okay. And yeah, okay, and this so is a good just deal. Like, this is just like stock. Like you just found this and. Well, it's mostly, can... it's mostly stock. Okay. Yeah. What did, what, what? You said you didn't do anything to it? I didn't do anything to it. Okay. Is it really loud? Start it up, start it up. Keys right there by the shifter. No, it's not really loud. It's got, it's got a little rumble to it as you'd expect. I mean, hey, it's not, I didn't get you like a Wait, four cylinder we, or a six cylinder Mustang. Can we do this with the garage door closed? Oh yeah, good, good thinking. <laughs> 
Can That's, we open, should we open up the, so, the Girls are door? always thinking. I, I wasn't. Yeah, well, I'll open up the door. Carbon monoxide, people. Open your garage door. blend doors for the air conditioning system. I'll fix it. That's nothing. Okay. okay. But now, now I it's like... I didn't know if you like, are lying to me. You actually did something. I did not. Something. I am not lying. <laughs> I am not lying. But yeah, now that it's idled down, it's not that bad. No, it's not bad. You want to give it a little, a little Yeah, again? now I'm worried like if I'm at a light, you know. Okay, do I give it a little more? Yeah. Sounds normal, right? Um, now, All right, so it's not that bad. It's not that loud, no. Um, now there is something to this car. So you know how like the Escalade has a supercharger and it makes like you know 640 horsepower. Okay, yeah. How much horsepower do you think this Mustang has? Yeah. <laughs> car quiz me. I don't know this thing. I leave it up to you to remember all this stuff. If I said it has like uh, probably like 650 about the same power as the Escalade, would you think that's a lot? Well, yeah, because what you did to the Escalade is a lot, right? And the Escalade weighs like twice as much as this. Yeah. Yeah, this one's got about what? as much power as the Escalade does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me show you something. Oh gosh. You ready? What do you think? This is what I noticed right away. Yeah, that's it. Twin turbo. <laughs> you have a twin turbo Mustang. Oh my gosh. That's insane, Alex. So what do I need that for? Well, you kind of don't need that at all. I mean, who who needs twin turbos, really? But I thought I was just cruising around with the girls. Well, we you can, and it drives just like a totally normal Mustang. You would never know that it has two turbos until you lay into it, which you don't have to do. But let's say like maybe I wanted to take it out <laughs> once or twice. Oh my I gosh. could possibly use these turbos. Okay. So you have a white twin turbo Mustang GT, and this is the California Special. So it's got the nicer interior uh, and different wheels and stuff like that. Um, but I planned on letting you drive it right now, but it's raining out, <laughs> oh. and it's a Mustang. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if you know. Give it to me on a rainy day. I didn't. Pl already, I brought it. I brought it here last night. For your no. cruise. No. I brought it. I brought it here last. Really night. I brought it here last night, and I was gonna have you drive it today. <laughs> that was the plan, and now it is pouring rain outside, which you guys know, rain Mustang, 600 horsepower, whatever this has, it does not mix. It looks like it's gonna rain for like the next three days. So I'm gonna bring it back to the shop. We're gonna do just a couple little modifications to it, and then I'll bring it right back, uh, hopefully very soon, for you to drive it for the first time. What are you gonna do? Just a couple of modifications. Safety modifications that all Mustangs need. Good right. safety. Like, safety? Like, 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 like is this not a big, safe car for me right it now? It is a very safe car, but you're gonna get better brakes, better tires, better wheels. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. It's gonna look different and awesome. Um, I noticed the wheels are really nice. They are really nice, but I think the new They're ones really you're gonna nice. like even more. So I will bring it back, I promise. We ran into some parts issues, but hopefully they will be here soon. Okay. All right. All right. You excited? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yay! My wife's got a Mustang with turbos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So um, to be continued. Okay. Well, it's about three months later and I never gave my wife back her twin turbo Coyote Mustang because I ran into some parts issues. So the plan was to install some GT500 front Brembo brake calipers and rotors and pads and paint them, put some Brembo stickers on there, and then also install some different wheels because these won't fit with the California Special wheels and everything just got messed up. If you guys follow the channel, you know we got a bunch of other projects going on. And because of this parts delay, it just kind of tumbleweeded into three months later. But I figured everything out and we are back on the Mustang. So we're gonna upgrade the brakes right now and then put the wheels on and then she gets to drive it. So believe it or not, you can get the GT500 front Brembo brake calipers, rotors, and pads for less than $500 and they're a direct bolt-on with the same generation Mustang GT. The issue is you have to get different wheels, which we have coming 
and should be here any day now. So for now, I wanna get these little bumps off. So we're gonna sand these calipers. Uh, we're gonna paint them. We're gonna clear coat them and add the stickers. We're also gonna be baking them in my toaster oven. That definitely was not the toaster oven from my single life before I got married and when I lived in a small condo in the city and, and that I never cleaned. That's definitely not the case. This is a professional caliper baking oven. So I've done a set of these Brembo's before on my Turbo WS6 Trans Am a long time ago. Actually installing these was like, the second video on the channel. Um, but they all come very bumpy. The aluminum casting just doesn't look the best, so we have to sand that down. And for that, we're just gonna use a little sanding block and some 220 grit. And we're gonna go like this. We're gonna sand it. This part doesn't take long. I've been at this for about one minute and this is already smooth. You're still gonna see little imperfections though. So then I'm just gonna go around a little bit in this area too. And this top part is pretty smooth, but if you have the time, just kind of sand everything that you would see. All right, so after about five minutes with the 220 grit sandpaper, this is what we have. And we're gonna finish this off with some 400. So same deal, you guys know how to sand. There's really nothing to it. Just sand all the areas that you want to look the best. Sanding is all done. And like anything, prep is key. So we want this really clean. And then I really like this Eastwood pre-painting prep spray. And then we'll just wipe this clean. See everything that's still coming off. We just gotta make sure it's done doing that. There's a little bit less before we start painting. All right, so with the caliper all cleaned up, we have moved over to my brand new professional spray booth right here and uh, we're gonna start spraying. So we're gonna start off with the self etching primer and I'm just gonna do two coats of this and it'll help fill in any more little impurities in the aluminum and it'll also make for a better surface for our red to adhere. We are going with red, I know, so cliche. Everybody does red, but I just like it. I stick with what I like, people. I don't follow trends, I just I do what I want. Actually, red calipers are probably the most trendiest color ever. That's probably why you guys are commenting that I should have done something more unique. I mean, if I really wanted to be different, I could just go with the camo green color from this etching primer. That actually looks pretty darn good, but I'm going with red, all right? All right, so we're on coat number two coming up, and these are really light coats, and you want proper ventilation, a nice ventilator mask as well that I'm kind of defeating the purpose of by talking to you people. Can you hear that? Pretty good quality audio right there, right? We're also gonna paint the top hats of the rotors. So I'm gonna go ahead and primer these as well. I'm not doing both of the calipers at the same time because there's so many little nooks and crannies of the calipers that if I do them individually, I just know I'm gonna do a better job, but these are pretty easy. All right, so we need 30 minutes in between the primer and the first coat of red. So while we wait, we're gonna be super efficient and remove the rear calipers because we need to we need to paint this whole situation too. And oddly enough, on the GT500, these are the same brakes. So they don't get nice looking Brembo's in the back, at least at this time. Ooh, that is not pretty. We're gonna make it pretty though. And the pads and rotors are, are like new, so I'm not gonna replace these, um, but I think we're gonna have to clean them up though. All right, there's our bracket and our rotor. All right, let's see how we can clean this guy up. Oh, easy. I'm gonna switch it to this disc. I think this might work even better. Oh yeah. It's like a magic eraser. I know I'm being cheap here not buying new rear brake rotors. You can call me cheap or an environmentalist, okay? There's nothing wrong with these rotors. And the rust is just coming right off. All right, it's time for our first coat of the base. Oh yeah. So we're gonna go with a pretty light coat for this first one. And we'll do two light coats and then one kind of heavier coat. Uh, this is just kind of a dusting right now. 
Obviously, it's making a drastic color change because it's red, but we're not laying this on thick just yet. While the first coat of red is drying, okay, we're gonna attempt to spray this. There we go. No, I think this is gonna work. No. Okay, this guy is broken. We'll do it the old fashioned way. So while I'm painting, Peter is cleaning up our brake caliper bracket and we're gonna do the same to the rear brake calipers. Here's our second coat. Another light one. All right, here is our third and final coat. And we're just going to lay this on a little bit thicker. We don't want any runs, though. So don't go too crazy. All right, let's see what these rotors look like. So these rotors are actually pretty easy to mask off because it goes down, it dishes down. So it's an easy tape line. And you can get perfection like this. Okay, that is very satisfying to do, I must say. Bam, it's a beautiful looking rotor. They should come like that. Some more satisfying tape peeling here on the rear rotors. The brake pad's gonna contour itself exactly where it needs to be here, so it might scrape off a little of the paint, which is fine. Last up, we're gonna use some gloss clear coat, make sure it's for high temperature. And we'll do the same thing. A couple of light misty coats and then one thicker coat. All right, so after three coats of clear, this is what our caliper looks like, nice and glossy. And now it is time to bake it. So we're gonna do 200 degrees for 20 minutes. All right, I'll throw it in the old Easy Bake Oven. And I'm just gonna put a socket right here on the grate. So it kind of holds it up so the face of it's not touching there. Bake, here we go. All right, that's it. Now we do other things. All right, so while that's baking, we are going to be cleaning up this rear caliper. I've already sprayed it down with some brake clean. And we'll just agitate, get off as much dirt as possible. And so after about five minutes of using these wire wheels, we have this, and now we got to brake clean it. And then after the brake clean, the caliper looks like this, and we have the bracket ready to go as well. And from here, you know the deal. A couple of coats of the etching primer, and a few coats of our red. All right, we just got the new wheels for the Mustang from my guys at Fitman Industry, the only place you guys need to know about when you're ordering aftermarket wheels for your cars. If you don't wanna mess around with sizes and research and a bunch of bad information on forums, just get your wheels from Fitman. Their customer service is amazing and they will set you up with exactly what you need the first time. I'm so excited to show you these wheels. I told them I was putting the larger brakes on the Mustang. They knew the exact offsets and everything that would work. I told them generally what style I wanted to go with. Oh, oh I can't wait to get this out. I'm so excited. And here we are. So this is kind of a GT500 look to it. And I'm a big fan of factory looking upgraded wheels. So the guys at Fitment also hooked me up with some brand spanking new Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. These are probably some of the best tires around. And we are going with 20s on the Mustang. And this Fitment should be very flush with the body. I don't really like anything too sunken in or when it's kind of poking out like a really aggressive stance. Um, not a big fan. I just, I just like it flush. So we're going to unbox the rest and then bring these over to my buddy James at Wicked Visions Customs for the powder coating. And I'm going to show you exactly how they do that. But if you guys need wheels, tires, suspension, check out fitmentindustries.com. I'm going to leave the link down below. They are the best in the business. All right, it's time for our Brembo decal. Don't want to mess this up. I don't have any extra. All right, so we're going to go ahead and peel the backing off. All right, then it helps if you get a flashlight on here to see the shadow because we're putting the decal right on this face. And you can study pictures online to see exactly where this goes, or you can look at your white turbo Trans Am that you did this to 10 years ago. 
I'll show you when I'm done where I placed this decal. We only get one shot. I didn't order any extras. Okay, so I'm just going to anchor a little end there. Okay, I think that is correct. All right. We're committing right now and just push on the white letters. All right. And now if we did a good job, this red paint won't come off. So far, so good. Take your time. Okay, we did it. All right. Excellent. That looks great. This is kind of my least favorite part because if you're off by a little, it's like, well, what do we do? Do we scrape all of this off and start the whole process over? Or do we just live with it? Um, but overall, I think if you take your time, you'll be all right. And this looks, this looks pretty good. I think the decals on the Trans Am are a little bit smaller, actually. Huh. Weird. Yeah, they're definitely smaller. Wow. All right. I guess that's all I could find back then. 10 years ago, Alex, what were you thinking? All right, we finished up the other front caliper off camera, and now the final stage here is clear coat again. All right, so we're just gonna do one wet coat just on the face. We've already clear coated everything else, and this isn't even 100% necessary according to the sticker manufacturer. You don't need to do this, but why not? Now they're sealed in there, and they'll stay cleaner for longer. And of course, we will clear coat these, and we're gonna bake them as well. And then outside of installing them on the car, calipers are done. All right, let's go ahead and take these factory brakes off. And these brakes work just fine, guys. I am mostly doing the Brembos for looks. That's why most people actually have them. We don't actually need these to stop any better for what we're doing with the Mustang. We're not taking it on a road course. A lot of people think they need gigantic, really big brakes for street driving and spend a lot of money on carbon ceramics, whatnot, but it's just mostly all for looks. Carbon ceramics, honestly, are just to show off, just so you have that most highly optioned exotic ever, but those guys aren't using them either. All right, so we're able to take off the rotors, brake pads, and caliper and bracket all in one nice little chunk, or kind of big and heavy chunk. All right, so now we're going on with our larger rotor. If you guys are wondering what the size difference is, there you go. There's your size difference. I think it's about an inch. All right, then we have our new Brembo brake caliper. So there is no separate bracket. It's all one piece and it should be a direct bolt on. Well, the first bolt's lining up. That's nice. And so is the second. Sweet. So far, so good. Looks right at home. All right, so we just have to install our brake hose. These are new washers. Slide one in on that side, and then right here. Do not cross thread this, and when you're painting your calipers, make sure to block off anything that's threaded so you don't get a bunch of paint in there. And we'll tighten this up and the caliper bolts by hand. All right, so I've greased up our brake pads, and now we simply just slide these guys right in like that, and like so next up we have brand new hardware that came with the caliper kit and this just goes in like this pin from the back i made a whole video dedicated on how easy it is to do a brake job when you have a fixed caliper and i'll leave that link down below it's from like three years ago but it still applies so now we're just going to hit those with a hammer And you can hear the audio change when the pin is fully seated. There we go. So in the front, we went from this all the way to this. Wow, does that look cool. I cannot wait to get the wheels on. You guys have seen us bleed brakes a million times. So we just got done bleeding them and inevitably you will scrape off some of the paint from that little nut there. Um, but we just sprayed some of the red caliper paint in a little cap. We have our paint dabber. We're just giving it a little touch up. All right, it's late night. I'm here at Wicked Visions Customs. My guy James is about to pull out the last wheel. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, no way, dude. You got to be kidding me. How hot does it get in there? About 400 degrees. Oh, well, okay. it is 400 degrees. So I can just grab it right now? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Get my fingerprints in it? <laughs> there you go. Personalized. Wow. Unbelievable. So as you guys saw, they were satin black originally. 
uh, which is cool. I'm just not a big fan of just black wheels. Uh, so we went with their version of black chrome. So they do a powder coated chrome base on these and then they have their own kind of special concoction. This is their own little twist on the black chrome color. And I gotta say, it's gotta be the best one I've ever seen. This is unbelievable because the actual black chrome you see from the factory is not a powder coat finish. The factory black chrome wheels that you see are actually done with a PVD process. All right, so the guys mounted the tires on three of them. They just have that last one to go that just got out of the oven, but they'll be able to put a tire on that in about 20 minutes as soon as it cools. So I got a tire shine this up and show you the whole, the whole thing while we're here at Wicked Visions. This is their own tire shine too, and it's the best. I've been using this for like three months, just testing it out. And I think it just made it on their website. So they've been working on this formula forever and I got to be kind of a test mule and it works really well. So if it's for sale, I'll leave a link down below. Wow, this guy is looking good. So this is the center cap that came with the wheels. And here she is. Oh, this is gonna look so killer on the Mustang, especially with the brake calipers popping from the inside. And we're running a 285 3520 in the rear, uh, and I think a 255 in the front. And they even took some footage, which I thought was really interesting because they lay down basically a base chrome powder coat, which I've never seen before. The wheels actually look pretty cool with this. So after they apply the chrome, they let it bake in the oven for a half hour at 400 degrees, then they pull it out let it cool down to room temperature, and that's when they apply their special concoction to turn it into what you guys see right now. And then they were able to install my brand new tire pressure monitoring sensors, which are in there, and the tires, and we are ready to rock and roll. Check this out, before they mount the tire on a freshly powder coated wheel, or any wheel here, they put a special tape on the lip here to protect it. It's really nice. Thanks, James. No problem. <laughs> Just like that. Look at that. And like every tire shop should do this. Yeah, it helps. I've seen so many scratched up lips before. Not a Wicked Visions custom. So if you guys are anywhere near the Chicagoland area, definitely visit my guys at Wicked Visions Customs here in Northbrook, Illinois. They are currently running an insane 50% off sale for most powder coating services, and their work just speaks for itself. Just phenomenal work, family owned, local business. Check them out, all the information will be down below. All right guys, here we go. Wheels going on. Woo, so exciting. There we go. Oh man, this is gonna be good. Let's get all these wheels on. I will torque them. Whenever people see me using the gun, they're like, he didn't torque them. I'm like, I did. I just, in every video, don't wanna show you guys, click, 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 times four. That's no fun, but I click them. I click them every time. Mustang is hitting the ground. Now we have to jounce the suspension, but I didn't lower this car because I wanna see what it looks like first with these wheels. I don't like when they poke out at all. And this is perfect. It's totally flush front and rear. And you can adjust this kind of stuff using spacers too, small spacers, stuff like that, especially if you're not going with custom really expensive wheels where they can modify the offset, but I'm, I'm definitely liking this. Click, click, times 20. Here it is with our brand new wheels and our big Brembo brakes. I think this looks so mean. The fitment is awesome. I was a little worried about getting 20s on this, um, but it looks great. And some of the newer Mustangs have 20 inch wheels on them anyway, so this fits perfectly. I love the fitment, I love the color and in some light this actually has a little hint of purple in the wheels it's it's very faint i don't know if you guys will see it on camera um, but just look at this up close so these are not exact gt500 replicas they just look pretty similar to them and i really like kind of that factory look a factory plus look if you will and i do believe the mustangs that had the brembo brakes they were painted black and we did red um, and I think that looks good too. I actually really like the center caps that these wheels come with. It kind of just makes everything pop. And uh, wow, wow does this look phenomenal. I love it. I think we need a little bit more low in the rear. The front ride height is really good, especially for what this car is gonna be doing, which is 
primarily my wife driving it and not me at all. But for her sake, I may lower it a tad in the rear and maybe, I don't know, upgrade the turbos and run it on E85 and retune it, stuff like that. Stuff that your wife needs to have in her twin turbo Mustang. All right, let's go drive this over to my wife and have her go for a spin and we'll see what she says about all this, this madness that's going on here. Man, this thing like dead hooks. You can launch this thing. It's really sunny out, but these brand new Michelin tires, amazing. And the Brembo's work really well. My wife is gonna love this or she's gonna be really scared. One of, one of the two. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, wife. <laughs> this is too much fun. I love this car. Oh, the brakes work so well. So one of the biggest modifications you can do to improve braking on your car are good tires. That's the only part that contacts the road. Um, so like I said, most of the time we're doing big brakes just for the looks of it, unless you're tracking the car and they're heating up too much. Um, but the previous brakes, as long as they can lock up the tires, they're, they're pretty good. These are better than the factory ones though. Uh, but uh, yeah, the tires feel so good on here. Oh, this thing is a highway machine. It just pulls and never stops. I love how it revs. I mean, it makes power like to 7,000 RPM. Oh, this is so cool. I'm mostly an LS guy, but I gotta say this Coyote, it's, it's got it going on. Especially with the boost. All right, am I here? You're here, you're here. <laughs> hey guys, let me give you the key. Okay, Here's the key. All right. All right, you ready for this? I know. Yes, I already saw the car. I know, but that was like three months ago. It's got different wheels and okay. brakes. That's what I did to it. Okay. All right, ready? Open, open. Okay. I like them. Pretty nice, huh? Yes, they're awesome. Yeah, we, we put some 20 inch wheels on there and the big Brembo brakes. Wow. It took a long time, but it's finally arrived. Your Mustang 5.0. I, I can't wait to drive this thing. You get to drive it right now. You ready? Yes, okay. I'm ready. You have two boosted vehicles now. You're right. Yeah, and then it's boost weather too. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Are we in trouble? I mean, it depends. This is a Mustang. You can get in some trouble. Oh man. But it's got really good tires now, so you should be all right. Okay. It's been a long time since I heard this thing. It's pretty nice. Oh yeah. Can't believe this is my car. Yes it is. Like more than half my car, like yeah, 80%. It's like 85 percent your car. Oh thanks for the extra five <laughs> that I gave myself. All right we just got out of a construction zone so now we can go for a nice long drive out in the country. Yeah right. We are not in the country. <laughs> we just got out of Chicago. It's brutal. It's brutal over there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I do have to say though, going through all that construction and stuff and to this point, this is a really easy car to drive. Yeah. It's yeah. so smooth. I feel like I'm driving just a normal car. I'm not like driving your TA or something. Yeah. The TA is a little bit more shaky. Polyurethane engine mounts. Yeah. Just know. the steering on the TA to this is like night and day. Yeah. This is a very, very nice place to be and the interior is in excellent condition. Awesome stereo. Yeah. This is this whole thing. The, the whole cluster. cluster. Yeah. yeah. And then this. Look, it's got heated seats. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't even check that out last time I was in this car. Probably because it was summer. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> was a very know. long time ago. Yeah, it was a while. <laughs> and uh, and the way, so if it has um, heated seats, does it have Bluetooth? Yes, yes, it's got Ooh. Bluetooth. If you guys have seen the Escalade videos, you know that's pretty much all my wife cares about. If the car has Bluetooth, <laughs> <laughs> when I first showed her the Escalade, it's got like a million little bells and whistles and mm -hmm. she's like, does it have Bluetooth though? And I'm like, yes. I love Bluetooth. It, 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 Bluetooth is a very nice technology. When we met like 12 years ago, she was driving uh, like 150,000 mile base model Alero. I've had my TA forever. I did love that car. It was a great car, phenomenal car. Um, and then I think at the time when we met, my daily was a two door diesel Yukon. It was a 95 Yukon 6.5 turbo diesel. But again, you know, not, not many features. So like this is still, this is like, really still impressive like yeah I, I love it i think we've we've moved up <laughs> to a, like a 12 year old mustang or whatever year this yeah is. <laughs> are you ready are you ready all right yeah, I'm straight i would do like half throttle first though like this yeah that's good. oh wow just that's to nice. just to get an idea okay all right yeah it gets a little it's wild okay yeah we're pretty open here 
Should I do it again? Yeah. Okay. You like, could probably mash uh, it though, yeah. You could mash it. Uh, all right, I'm all the way down. Holy cow, Alex. <laughs> Holy cow. Stop it. <laughs> That's yours. Oh my gosh. I'm never doing that again. What? It has to be so dry out. Yeah, yeah. That today's, just like. Well, today. Oh, yeah. Today's a great day. It's like 75 and oh. sunny. Oh. And you have like the best tires in the world. Oh, that here. is so scary. And. That is awesome. so. Yeah, I mean, it's very awesome, but on a regular street. <laughs> I mean, we're in the country. That's right. We're in the country. We're in the country of Mexico. All right, so only when you're straight. Now we're going a little slower. I want you to punch it now while I'm in the car so we can kind of teach okay. you how to control a Mustang. All right, go ahead. Oh, God, Alex. Isn't that insane? Oh, my gosh. I didn't think it was going to go anymore, and then it did. Did you feel, do you, do you feel the boost? Um, yeah. So, I feel the boost, but it's weird when it comes in. Well, yeah. So it's not like your your Escalade has a supercharger, so it's like instant. It okay. Even like, yeah. Yeah. Because I almost let up, and then I was like, oh, you know, this is like going okay, and then it like <laughs> boom went went even more. So it's like it's oh my gosh, it's a little bit more controllable like that, isn't it? Nice. I I yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's different. Um, the fact that I have to. You know, it's like I don't know when it's gonna come in. We're like, yeah, it, like when it's like instant, like you know, it's yeah. gonna come right now. So you're more of like a supercharger, all motor type of lady. Too. Man, the side mirrors really matter on this car because I look in the back and I can't really see that car bit behind me because of the the oh, fender. No. Oh, the spoiler. The spoiler, me. <laughs> I'm a car girl. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, Alex, when am I ever gonna go and hit the gas like that, though? I don't know. You might, you might need it. You can hit the gas right <laughs> now, though. <laughs> All right, I'll do it one more time. Boost. Okay. 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 See, you're doing good, though. Okay. And how about those tires? Can we give it up to the tires? Because the tires are awesome. Like, you don't understand. Like a lot of cars will break free and get a little yeah. crazy. Those are excellent tires. So now this car is done. I can have this car. It can, it can be yes. my car for real. Yes, this car and is not, actually. And not hide in your legit street quarters. It's not hiding <laughs> in my legit street quarters. It's going to be at the house in the garage. You nice. can drive it whenever you want. Okay. It is a normal car and it is actually yours. I know everybody has joked around in the comments <laughs> section that this is just an excuse for me to get a twin turbo Mustang, which it, yeah, a little, but. It will be at the house. You can drive it all the time. I got plenty of other cars that I could drive. Well, not that many at the house. I got I got the wagon though, which I'm completely happy with. So, okay. This is your twin turbo Mustang. Sweet. But I might send the turbos out maybe during the winter and just have them rebuilt because they got they got a little play in them. And what? I want you to have really Alex. nicely re, re you know refreshed rebuilt turbos. Alex. And they might get uh, they might expand slightly. What? Size, <laughs> this but, is so ridiculous. Yeah. And we might end up running this thing on E85. Are you, you serious? Know about, you remember about E85? Yeah, it's because some of the cars you tell me I have to do E85 and something. Yeah, like, what? Well, yeah. It's better. It's more octane. It's, yeah, I was going to say it's the octane. It's more power. So, might bigger turbos E85, that's it. But it'll still be just like it is right now. It'll actually smell better running on corn oil. So, I think you'll oh, enjoy okay. that. Yeah, because yeah. I do smell it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Whoa. Uh -huh. That is insane. Oh. All right. I can't think I could take this on a girls' weekend. Wouldn't it be so much fun? It would be fun. Out it would the, be fun. Out in the country. I mean, we're in the country. Would it be more out in the country? Yes. And I mean. We wouldn't be doing this all weekend, but it'd be nice to like cruise around, you know. I'll leave that to your 25% of the time that you have this car. Oh, I get 25? I'd given you 85. So. Oh, you gave me 85? Okay. I'll take it though. No. <laughs> it's going to end up being like 75 down to 50, I think, no, pretty quick. No, no, no. It is your car. It's your car. <laughs> all right? It's your Mustang. I don't want it. It's yours. Oh, it's a two door Yukon. I miss mine so much. Yeah, I do remember that car. That was sweet. It was a turbo diesel. And when we met, my, my two vehicles, the license plates were rare TD for rare turbo diesel, <sighs> obviously. And the Trans Am at the time was bone stock. 
And so I pulled her, so I pulled up to pick her up in the Trans Am on our first date. So she saw those plates and she saw the other ones. It wasn't a good look in the beginning. No. Pretty it much. was, what, who is this guy? Yeah, like rare TD. I guess I, I see the general public might think of like rare STD, bone stock could be like bone stick. I, I thought stick. And I, I didn't know. I was like, what is, who is this guy picking me up? But I'm, I'm here. I, I was a charmer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. Dr- with, with some explanations. Yeah, too. <laughs> two expl- I had to, you know, get right into the car scene immediately. But here we are 12 years later driving a twin turbo Mustang. All right, guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed this little twin turbo Mustang madness. <laughs> if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned during the winter for some tiny little maintenance items like bigger turbos and 85 <laughs> and uh and then my wife will have this back in the spring and, and we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens all right all right <laughs> most importantly have an awesome day and i'll catch all of you guys in the next video